Well, hello YouTube and welcome to Cap Day Sport Fishing YouTube channel, Jacksonville, Florida. We're sitting in what I refer to as the wolf den at this moment. This is where I do all my in the air conditioning tabletop workings. So what I'm doing here today, which has absolutely nothing to do with this video, is I am changing the hooks out on one of my favorite mirror lures for the sheer fact that I believe when you get them the hooks are too big. I'll give you a little brief. This is one of my favorite mirror lures. That right there is a 65M. It's a heavy, heavier than normal mirror lure. I mean, as you can see here, I got bunches of them, all different colors, but just picked these up for a song on eBay, which happens to be one of my favorite colors is the white, silver, and fluorescent orange head. You know, this, I don't fish like some Southwest Florida guy. I'm fishing deeper, swifter water, lots of current many times. So that's what this would be referred to as sort of a deep diver. And what I'm doing is I'm changing the hooks out. This is the hook that came on it. Now this is an old school bait. Not many people would use these because everybody is, you know, Mr. Flats master today with their power poles and trolling motors and so I mean when you look mirror lures up on YouTube or whatever that's all you're gonna see but this is the ones that I prefer okay and there's a number four VMC and this is what was on there what is that like a two watt I mean come on I'm not twitching this expecting to be catching a hundred pound tarp you know I want to catch a trout, pretty much just a trout. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing here in the wolf den right now is I'm getting rid of these hooks and I'm putting on these number four VMCs. This is an old school mirror lure. It's got that mirror lure hook hanger and then just an eye. And again, if you're a subscriber to my YouTube channel, here's where the braid angler's tool comes in mighty handy because what you're what I'm doing is I'm unscrewing the eye on the stern of this bait here with the screw eye and I'm having to open it up and what's the best way of doing it with the proper tool I'm sticking the eye in there and I'm opening it up so I can slide on this new VMC All right. so then I got that new VMC and then I go in here and close it very easily with the proper tool and this happens to be a Dennis Braid from Braid Fishing Products Angler's Tool. And then, I've mentioned this before about making my kingfish rigs with this. And then I'm screwing this eye back in. Well, I'll do that after I get done talking about this subject. Which this, this isn't called the fisherman's tool. It's called the angler's tool. I made a post on my community page on YouTube about, you know, using croakers in Northeast Florida to catch giant trout. Or let's put it this way, bigger than normal during the heat of the summer. Now granted, we've had a 19 inch trout swallow a six inch croaker before. I've got proof of that because it's on video. But I said on 
with so many words, is that when you're going and catching croakers in the summer to go catch giant trout, it's an angler's game. Not a, just a fisherman's game. It's an angler's game. What is the definition of an angler? I'll ask you to see if, you know, what would you think it would be? There's fishermen. There's anglers. Angling, that's an old, an old English term. The first book that was ever written about fishing and being an angler was the complete angler and I can't even, I can't really remember who wrote it now over in England in like I don't know 1740 or something okay where they were going and fishing these little ponds you know for fish in these ponds and taking horse tail hairs and weaving together. I'm sure they had servants doing that. Weaving them together and then making little flies, fake flies and throwing that fly out there. And it was called the complete angler because what it was is these snobby British upscale people were trying to teach others about the etiquette. The etiquette of being an angler. Versus going out and throwing a net around a whole school of fish or something. So that is an actual, that's a term. And it's, I believe, an old English term. Well, in today's world, I'm going to quote Larry Dahlberg, basically. Larry Dahlberg is like an ungodly kind of guy. Um, he had a TV show called Larry Dahlberg's Hunt for Big Fish. Hunt for Big Fish. And he's a musky guy. He's a tarpon guy. He's a marlin guy. He's himself. He goes, he used to go to the un, most unbelievable back woods of countries that you wouldn't think of to go catch giant fish. Always pretty much on the lures that he made because he is a lure designer for uh, River to Sea uh, products. <laughs> so, Larry Dahlberg put being an angler this way, and I 100% agree. The difference between a fisherman and an angler is an angler goes to a certain place to catch a certain fish with certain tackle, certain time of year, certain day, to catch a certain fish. Boom, 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 boom. It's all planned out. Where, kind of on the other side, a fisherman can be anybody from a shrimper to a gill netter, to a net dragger, I mean, anything. A guy sitting on the bank in a lawn chair with a bucket of dead shrimp and just casting it out. A surf fisherman, somebody standing on a pier. But in each and every one of those categories can be stepped up into angler status, I guess you could say. I don't like to use that word. I mean, I don't mean status by, oh, you're up. An angler's up here and you're down here. I don't mean that. But in the context of my last video where you, I wanted to catch a big trout, a big trout, I was wanting really, really, really big, but a, you know, a five and a half pounder is okay. But let's see what I did. I left on a certain tide, went to a certain place to get a certain bait, then went to a certain place, put out those certain baits with certain tackle to catch a certain fish. Even in the charter business, a lot of people 
I get them on my boat and I say, you know, you're going to be anglers today. And they go, what? I don't, I don't know. What, what's an angler? And I tell them. And I said, we're going to do this, this, and this with this tackle at this spot, catch this bait to go catch that fish. And they go, well, I didn't know I was an angler. I said, well, you're not yet. You're not just yet. But I take that for granted, you know. And then there's, I got, I got customers that I want to do a certain kind of angling technique and stuff. And I'm busting my ass to try to do it. And either they're just happy just catching anything in particular. Like, let's say dead shrimp fishing on the bottom. You know, it's going to catch almost everything, you know, everything and anything. And they go, well, we're just happy doing this. And I go, cool, cool, whatever. Whatever is working works. And then there's another subset, I'd say, kind of of uh, charter customers. They want to go and they want to kind of do that angling, but then they don't have the patience for it. And they start giving that little, well, when are we going to get a bite? Oh, it's awful hot out here. Oh, what do you think, honey? You think we ought to go in? I mean, you start getting the little, I call it the messages. And I mean, being an angler, you better have patience. And I need to fit it all into a six-hour day. So there's where the tough part is for me. And I'm sure other fishing guides will say the same thing. I mean, they got a game plan. I don't care if it's going and catching snook under mangroves. They're in their flats boat or something. They're going along the mangroves and you're taking, you know, a lure or something. And you need to flip it up underneath those mangroves. Well then... What happens when you get people who can't do that? You can't do that lure pitching. They're going like this, and they're just snagging into the trees every two seconds. Well, a lot of these TV shows and things make it seem like just anybody can do that. Well, the skill set isn't there. Okay? So that's when many times you fall back to live bait fishing and a rod holder kind of thing. So... I'm not, not to blow this in into super, you know, proportion here. But when I made the post and put another video link in that community post of catch a giant trout on croakers. Never, not everything comes as easy as it did the other day where I had a croaker in the water for five minutes. Boom, I caught one. Time to leave, right? <laughs> and then you get into... You know, everybody wants dinner. They want dinner. But then they don't want to do what it takes to get the dinner. You know, things like that. So being an angler is certain tackle, certain technique, certain bait at a certain place at a certain time of year. So I just wanted to tell everybody that literally in this area, maybe not in Texas, not Louisiana, not Mississippi, not in Alabama, not anywhere along the Gulf Coast or something, it seems like, to me. But here in Northeast Florida, the trout fishing with the croakers is an angler's game. So I just wanted to let everybody know what an angler was. I mean, most people don't even think about it. I think about it all the time. So that's just one of those vlogging moments. As I'm sitting here, I was thinking about it, where throwing lures many times is truly an angler's game because what you have to do is fool the fish versus feed the fish. People don't even think about that. Are you out there throwing top water for them trout? Eh, not really. I got a guy who fished. He's 50 years old. The last time he fished, he was 12. And then he brought his uh, six and nine year old boys with them. No, we're not out throwing topwater plugs. 
I mean, the stuff that I hear from people, it's ridiculous. God bless America. I'll see you after Labor Day.